Hello everybody, my name is Joshua and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of Coffee, Cats, and King. Where we will discuss books, both new and old. I will share with you pictures of my cats will make you wish they were your cats. And I will drink enough coffee for me and everybody watching. <clears throat> so my mug today is the other souvenir mug that I got from our anniversary weekend. It's for Lou Ray Caverns. Um, and yes, I almost fell off my chair just now. <laughs> uh, my shirt, this is my concert tee from 2012 when me and my wife went to see Van Halen live. We saw the David Lee Roth Van Halen, uh, not Van Hagar. And everybody was excellent. Wolfgang was playing with them at the time. But I'm pretty sure that David did not realize that he was in concert or conscious. Uh, he was pretty, pretty rough. Forgot all our song lyrics. Uh, he dropped his pants on stage. And I went to the restroom beforehand and someone was definitely doing a little toking. And I'm kind of wondering if it was him now. So... It was a very interesting experience though and I'm very happy to say, as young as I am, that I got to see Van Halen in concert. Not as happy to say that I got to see David Lee Roth's butt in his 70s. <sighs> anyway, back with another book review times two. Um, again, same way as last time, reviewing a book that everybody has read and everybody talks about and wanted my opinion on, and another book that nobody has read nobody knows about and everyone's interested in. So, that is Thomas Tryon's The Harvest Home and Evangeline Walton's Witch House, which, yes, is still up for grabs on one of my next giveaways. I'm gonna start off with Witch House. And that cover says, Everlasting horror. The little girl saw it, saw the evil that had been bequeathed her by the house that had bedeviled her ancestors, and there was no escaping it. It lived at the lonely mansion off the New England coast. It followed her, possessed her, and it would not die. Dr. Gaylord Carew, acquainted with such supernatural phenomena, had been called to witch house by the child's mother in a desperate attempt to break the spell but neither the mother nor Dr. Carew was fully prepared for the rage of powers of darkness or for those terrifying retribution that threatened all who dared defy the black will of Witch House. So, it all sounds very dramatic and proper and... And my neighbor is playing very loud music, so hopefully you guys can't hear that. Uh, Witch House is a really great book. I'll say that first of all. It's a really great book. It's a really hard to find book. Um, I gave this, I think I gave it four stars. Might have been five, but I think I gave it four. And first of all, it is not a quick, simple read, although it is very short. It is not a quick, simple read. This thing is actually quite dense. Um, it is the literary language equivalent of reading, say, an Agatha Christie, in that things are very proper and there are not very many simple sentences, you know? Thing, uh, a sentence might go on for an entire paragraph and use language that you don't typically see in horror nowadays, you know? This is very much a literary horror. You're going to have to think about it and you're really gonna to have to pay attention to what's going on. Um, it is easy to get lost. It's kind of like reading Lovecraft, you know? Sort of an older English style, but very much an excellent read. Um, Dr. Gaylord Carew is an interesting character. He has a very mystery detective feel to him and so I guess that's kind of why that puts me in the mind of an Agatha Christie as well. 
it's not uh, it's not a gory book by any means. There is violence in some ways, but most of it is sort of off screen, if you will, and just talked about after the fact. Um, but it's more of a gothic, spooky horror. Uh, you know right off the bat that there is something wrong in this place, that there's some sort of malevolent spirit or ghost or something. You just don't know exactly what or how it's doing the things it's doing. Uh, but it's really neat, you know. Very uh, classic horror, if you will. There are, you know, things flying off the walls and voices whispering to people in the night. And uh, at one point, the doctor and the little girl are playing chess, and the chessboard just lifts up and goes flying across the room and scatters everywhere, and you know, pieces are being thrown at them. And uh, it's, but it's really fun. Um, like I said, it's very short, but it is dense. It's dense, you have to pay attention, and you have to be okay with some sort of old English style. If you're okay with that, you're gonna have a lot of fun with this book. Uh, that said, it is rather dated in certain ways. There's terminology that's used that would not be used nowadays. The women in the book are very much expected to act in a certain way and stick to a particular role. But, I said, it's still it's a very classic haunting story and really enjoyable. I'm very excited for someone to get this copy, hopefully on the next giveaway, which we are quickly coming up on. So, next up, I want to talk a little about Thomas Tryon's Harvest Home. Uh, now, like I said before in my pickup video where I showed this off, I waited so long to read this book one, because I wanted this copy in particular, I really liked this artwork. And two, because every time I thought about trying to find a copy, I ended up with a different book and I just got sidetracked and you know how it is. Uh, but at the insistence of many of you, I finally read it and I'm very, very, very glad I did because um, I believe the first thing I wrote in my review on Goodreads is that despite being very early in the year, I am almost positive that this book is going to end up on my best of 2021 list. Harvest Home is everything you might want in a folksy horror. Um, first, let me read you the quick little blurb on the back. It says, Warning, do not read this book if you're alone. But if you do, keep repeating to yourself, it's only a book. It's only a book. It was almost as if time had not touched the village of Cornwall Coombe. The quiet, peaceful place was straight out of a bygone era, with well-cared-for colonial houses, a white steepled church fronting a broad common. Ned and Beth Constantine chanced upon the hamlet and immediately fell in love with it. This was exactly the haven they dreamed of, or so they thought. For Ned and his family, Cornwall Coombe was to become a place of ultimate horror. So, it doesn't actually tell you a lot about this, but like I said it's a very folksy horror. It's going to put you in the mind of, say, The Wicker Man. Man, Thomas Tryon does everything right with this book. Anything you might want is in there. If you want the small town feel, it's there. If you want sex and violence, it's there. Um, if you want mystery and spookiness and possible ghostly or godly sightings, they're all in there. Body horror, it's in there. I, I mean, I don't know how he does it, but man, this book was killer. I can't wait to pick up something else from Thomas Tryon now, honestly. Um, I read this book and I was just, I said I was blown away the whole way through. I was enjoying every moment of it and I kept stopping and putting it down though. And my wife was asking me, you know, she said, well, how's it going? You know, I thought you were really liking this book. And I said, I am, I just, I don't want to read it too fast because I don't want it to end. <laughs> and uh, as long as I dragged it out for, I still just wish that it hadn't ended, you know? I'm glad that it did because Thomas Tryon ended it at this perfect moment, and the ending is, is just perfect for everything this book stands for. But 
I wanted more immediately. I wanted more. So thank you for everyone who suggested to me that I read Harvest Home. Um, it is, like I said, it's everything that you want in a folksy horror. And I highly, highly, highly suggest that anyone who has not read it picks it up immediately. Don't worry about finding a fancy cover or anything like that. It's just an excuse. It was my excuse. Don't use it as yours. It's an awesome book. Please pick it up. Please read it. Um, if you can find a copy, pick up Witch House, if that's your thing, and read it, because it is also awesome. If not, uh, then good luck to you on the next giveaway, because it might end up being yours. So, there you go, guys. Gave Witch House a 4 or 5, and I gave Harvest Home a definite 5. Would have been 6 if possible. So, there you go. Book review times 2 once more. Thank you for joining me as always. If you are new to the channel, uh, thank you for checking it out. I hope that you're enjoying the content so far. And I have a lot of really exciting things coming up. Bookish videos, uh, some more horror movie stuff, and some things that are... <clears throat> some things that are a little out of the realm of what people normally do on here. But uh, all of that's to come. Just stick with me. Keep enjoying it. Uh, give me any sort of suggestions of that down below. I always answer my, my comments down there. Uh, thank you all for joining me as always. And have a beautiful day. Cheers. Cheers.